What a way to start this week's video. Jupiter is going past Regent Riverside. Hello and welcome to this week's news from around the various places of the Norfolk Broads, along with footage from various places as well. It covers from the 5th to the 12th of April 2024. In a very short space of time, three syndicate boats went past. Evening Shadow. Lightning. And then followed closely behind by Gusander. I'm now at Ranworth Broad. No boats are allowed on this broad as it's a nature's reserve. But sailing very close by is the Southern Comfort paddle boat, purpose built for the broads and it can carry a hundred passengers. So this part of the river that the Southern Comfort is on just sweeps past this broad where I am. It's probably about time we had our first news article for the week. Just like the rest of the country, we had Storm Kathleen over the weekend. It was extremely windy, but it brought some wonderful warm weather with it. On Saturday, I was filming in the older car along the boardwalk down to the River Yare at Brundle, Brundle Church Ben. It was extremely warm in there. It was like a little tropical oasis. I was far too overdressed. I had Wellington boots on because I had to walk through mud to get to the boardwalk. And to save carrying a bag of any sorts, I wore my wax jackets with lots of pockets in it for my camera batteries and everything else I needed while out filming. But oh my goodness. Anyway... Let's go to Ludden Bridge and see what mischief Storm Kathleen got up to there. As you will see, the poor people on this cruiser were sent everywhere apart from the direction they wanted to go in. The wind is just not letting any cruisers do any manoeuvres over that side of the river. If they're this side and facing how Hill, they seem to be okay. I'm only including this footage to show the sheer power of the tide and the wind when they're against you. It's not for any other reason. And it all obviously ends well in the end. And there were a couple of people giving them instructions, telling them what to do. And of course, even though they were trying, they were following instructions, the wind just wasn't having it. Anyway, let's watch and see what they had to endure, shall we say. And it is probably thanks to the people that are on this side of the river who were out of shot of the camera, but, you know, advising them on what to do. They went up to the bridge, first of all, and realised they'd forgotten to take down their canopy. So what they've done is reverse out of the bridge and they want to go over that side to moor up so that they can take down the canopy.
And if you listen carefully, this is when you can just faintly make out that the people are trying to help them with instructions. This isn't the only cruiser you're going to see get into this kind of predicament with the storm. So please only write kind comments if you're going to be writing anything at all. Anything negative and unkind will be instantly deleted. And if you're thinking, why aren't they mooring over this side? Well, there's people getting water. So there isn't a space down there for them. And I don't think this space here was perhaps big enough for them. It must be very scary to be on a large cruiser and basically without any control of it. Poor people. Eventually, they do moor up successfully over on that other side. And they must have been so worn out because they sat over there for a good hour or so. Took the canopy down. And then eventually, they went through the bridge without a hiccup at all. So well done to them. And well done to the gentleman, or the two gentlemen over this side, who stood and gave instructions for ages to make sure they were okay. Isn't it great when everybody helps each other out? Now I know what the comments are going to say. Why didn't I tell them they can't fish this time of year? Well, simply because it's not my job to do so, is it? And if I go and tell them, they're not going to believe me. They're not going to take any notice of what I say. So I've learned from experience over the years, say nothing. And as luck would have it, the ranger arrived. And he just told them that it was the close season for fishing. So they packed up their things straight away. And that was that. Also, just right in front, can you see where somebody's had a bonfire? What's that all about? It wasn't the fishing people, though. At this point, I was joined by a couple of subscribers of mine and we were chatting of all things boating related and even down to where they could perhaps see some crane. So I've removed our private conversation. So that's why it's gone quiet and you can't hear the boats going past. So as you can see, it's not just that first cruiser that's been caught out by Storm Kathleen. It's several of them.
I saw this a few times actually, the cruiser would get to the bridge, get partly under, and then just seem to be pushed backwards. Water is so strong with the tide and the wind. Scary, isn't it? I think it's time to have another news article, don't you? A further £5 million will need to be paid to a new company to operate Great Yarmouth's troubled Herring Bridge once it has been up and running for a year. The contract ends next February and County Hall need to pay £5 million to a new company to take over its running for a 10-year contract. You'll see in a moment or two, there's a cruiser coming from the right-hand side. Well, they're playing their music loudly, so I don't want a copyright strike. <laughs> so, once again, I've had to turn the sound off. all got a little bit chaotic here for a couple of seconds. How none of them hit each other, I really don't know. The sort of the crunching noise you can he keep hearing is actually the holder that my phone is in that I'm using to film this. And of course the microphone on the phone is very close to the 
little cradle that it's in. So that's what you're hearing. It's only if I got to keep, you know, turning it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, because there's so much going on here. Otherwise, usually you wouldn't even notice. I don't move it. Yet another cruiser struggling to get under the bridge. I think it's time I left here and went and found somewhere else to see what havoc Storm Kathleen is creating. I'm off to get my friend first. And uh, we're going to do our usual. Coffee and cake or similar that's all I've done <laughs> for about the last... I'm trying to think, when was my son's birthday? Yes, so for the last week, that's all I've done. So there's actually a new cafe opened in Martham along the riverside, up by the ferry. So I said to Judith, I'd go and get her at lunchtime and we'd go there and see what it's like. Well, I picked her up. She'd only just got in. She'd been out like I had. I'd been out filming. She'd been out walking with her friends. And we went down to the ferry and the cafe was closed. So we thought, well, we'll go to Acre Bridge, which is where we went. And then we didn't know where to go next. So this was en route and the gentleman's on the top of his camper van or motorhome. When I picked Judith up, I told her that en route to getting her, I'd actually passed her husband who was out for a walk. And so she said she'd better just go and say hello to him. She'd been out in the morning. She was now going out in the afternoon with me, her poor husband. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> So we decided to come and have a look at Stalham Stays and while sat there, we suddenly thought, ah, oh, Richardson's Cafe, let's go there and have a look. So that's what we did. We started off sitting outside, but I don't think we even lasted a minute outside. It was so windy with the storm still going on. Anyway, it was very nice. We went inside, sat in there. Very nice cafe. Thank you, Richardson's. Just to make clear, we are not out every week for coffee and cake. It might seem like it. We can only meet up when it's the school holidays. So, they end soon, so that's it. I probably won't see her now for weeks on end. She should be glad to get away from me. She's actually away camping this week with her friends, so... If you're watching this in your tent, Judas, <laughs> I hope your fan heater works. I shouldn't laugh, but the others are in motor homes and she's in a tent. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I'll get struck off the uh, Christmas card list. I have actually just heard from her 
it was so windy last night that they couldn't put the tent up until gone 9 p.m. Nice sunny day today, but windy again this evening. Let's get back to the news, shall we? Bacteria levels unsafe at swimming spots on the River Waveney at Bungie. Five of the nine locations tested on the River Waveney around Bungie contain bacteria commonly found in human and animal faeces at levels unsafe for swimmers. For further details about this story, the link is in the write-up that goes with this video. I saw this boat on the trailer pull up and it says down the side, Panther's Yard, safety boat. Little did I know then of the story that was unfolding. The title of this next article is Drama on the Norfolk Broads as Holidaymakers Capsize and Sink Their Hire Boat. A group of holidaymakers had a lucky escape after their boat sank in high winds. Two adults and two teenagers were on board when they were hit by a huge gust of wind and it went over, onto its side and sank until almost disappearing below the water. This happened between Howe Hill and Ludham. Staff from the boatyard managed to refloat the boat and put a pump on board to empty the water. Everyone on board is safe. This is the boat now going past, back to the boatyard and apparently it will be out on hire again on Saturday. Isn't that amazing? A winter of storms and flooding has caused the number of sunken boats on the Norfolk and Suffolk Broads to more than double. There have been 10 wrecks this year compared to four last year. More about this story can be found by clicking on the link in the write-up. There are several sailing boats to go under Ludden Bridge. So I've speeded them up because I didn't want to miss any of them out. If you've enjoyed this week's news video for the last seven days, perhaps you could give it a like for me. Feel free to share it to any of your social media platforms and if you haven't already subscribed to me perhaps you'd like to do that as well as this helps my channel grow and reach a greater audience and it'd be very much appreciated thank you
I did say there were several to get through, didn't I? I'm almost at the end of today's video, but I thought we'd just sit here and watch the river and just see what passes us by. I don't know if any of you listen to podcasts at all, but I'm in the process of setting up my own and hopefully they'll be on Spotify. That's who I'm signed up with. But it's not like making a video and uploading it to YouTube. It has to be listened to, checked, and that takes a while for it to then go live. So something new, something different. I don't know. If you listen to them, then that would be great. I'll let you know more details and if it gets accepted, that's the thing, isn't it? Will it be accepted? They might not like my voice. They might not like the mistakes I make. I can get away with the mistakes with all of you on YouTube. You just accept me as I am. <laughs> Thank you all. I forgot to say, if it's accepted, it will be distributed by them to YouTube. So you don't have to go listen anywhere else. You'll be listening to it on here. I'd just like to thank you all for watching. Have a good week. And I'll be back again next Friday with the next roundup of the news for you. Take care. Bye for now.